hello. This is uh, chapter six of the Top Hat um, textbook. Um, this one is, we're going to be talking about um, the stereochemistry. Um, so, so this is, this chapter, I warn you, it's not hard. It's just a little weird um, in that what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, you know, deal with atoms in three-dimensional space, right? Up to this point, we've drawn them in, in two dimensions, but not three. Um, and so um, what we're having to do is, is, is be able to do this. And the, the way that we're going to have stereoisomers, right? So, so if you think about these, is that, you know, your hands are, are mirror images of each other. Um, but the way they interact with gloves is going to be different, right? So, but that, so there was a reason why your left hand glove doesn't fit on your right hand. And that's all about what the handedness and about the, 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 um, the orientation of, of how these things are, are in space. So the... Uh, um, so the uh, for this right, we're going to talk about um, enantiomers and the um, uh, the tetrahedral carbons. So on the tetrahedral carbon, what you've got is you've got four different things hanging off of it. Okay. So you've got this. Um, you've got the OH. You've got the carboxylic acid. You've got the hydrogen, and you have the methyl. Um, so like that. So those are four different things hanging off. And there's two ways that you can actually draw it. You can draw it like this and draw it like this. And and notice how they're mirror images of each other. And so if you look at the, so if you make a, you know, use your model kits here. So this is one of those chapters where having a model kit is, it comes in really handy, if not just having the tetrahedron. Oop, um, how do I do this? So, oop, I put these on backwards. This needs to be over here. So there we go. Um, so notice how these things are are mirror images. They're um, the uh, so, so this one you know this this was looking into the mirror. This is how it would see right. So this over here is back there, there, and there. But um, so, so these are the two orientations. But if we tried to do what's um, one of the quirkiness of this of the tetrahedral carbon is that. Um, the, uh, there's no way that we can do what's called, we can't superimpose them on there. So if we could somehow sort of make this one invisible where we could try to put it on there, um, notice how if we, if, we got the, um, if we got the red and the, or excuse me, if we got the white and these hydrogens here in the same orientations, the reds and the blues would be pointed in the, op in, in the wrong directions. Um, if I, and you can rotate these things around, so right, if I tried to, you know, basically put the, all the colored balls on top of each other, now the, the hydrogens are pointing in the wrong direction. Um, so there's no way that we can superimpose these things on there. Um, so that, and when that happens, when you have a mirror image and, and you can't rotate one of those, um, where there's always some sort of mis mismatch, we call that, um, that that's the, the relationship between those two molecules are enantiomers, okay? So, so again, it's, you know, with, with these stereoisomers, right, what's the relationship between them, right? You know, you know, what are those two people? Well, they're spouses. What's the relationship with the cousins or their um, siblings or whatever, you know? So we're just talking about the, um, the relationship between the two. Now, if you try to do this where um, you didn't have a tetrahedral carbon, you can still make a, um, you can still make a mirror image, right? But these are not enantiomers because what I can do is I can rotate this thing around. So I see, how do I do this? Okay, here we go. So that if you try to superimpose them, no problem, right? The reds are right here, the blues are right here. You've got two hydrogens here, you've got two hydrogens here. Um, that is, so they are superimposable. So these, the relationship between these two molecules is just simply the same. Um, they're, they're the same, but they are not enantiomers of each other. Okay? Oop, wrong way. So if they're not mirror, so, so if they're stereoisomers and they're not mirror images of each other, uh, we call those di-stereomers. Okay, and so for those, the uh, um, the uh, so cis and trans, those are um, that's a um, those are what are, um, those can be a di-stereomers, right? Because they they all have the same connectivity. Um, you know, this, you know, each one of these carbons has a chlorine and a hydrogen, chlorine and hydrogen, double bond. But the way these things are oriented in space is a little different, um, but they're not mirror images. And so we consider those to be um, diastereomers. So if you sort of think about the breakdown, so, so if you have isomers, if, if the only relationship between the two is that they're, um, 
that their formula is the same, then we just consider those constitutional isomers. But if the, con uh, the connections between the atoms are, are the same between the two molecules, then those are stereoisomers. And there's two different types. If you have a non-superimposable mirror image, it's a very special case, those are what are called enantiomers. Otherwise, if they're not, they're stereoisomers that are not mirror images of each other, then they are considered diastereomers. Okay, so those are terms we're going to be using a lot in this course. Okay, and so the um, and so again, if you when the, when you have the mirror image um, is superimposable, okay, you can have um, then we consider those to be icaros. So these are um, so so these are non-superimposable, um, non-superimpose. Okay, so, so these are chiral because these are non-superimposable on each other. But you can have, right, so here there's a mirror image of each other, right? So it's like with the other ones, right? You know, here and here, these are mirror images. But I can flip this over and they would be superimposable. So we don't consider those to be chiral, um, chiral molecules. They, they don't have this, um, they, they're the same molecule. They're not enantiomers. So we consider that to be achiral. So chirality just means you have a molecule that has the um, has this tetrahedral carbon in it, okay? And the, it actually comes from the word hand, right? So because your hands are mirror non-superimposable mirror images of each other, um, and stuff like that. And so the other thing about this is that the molecule, if it do, if it doesn't have one of these um, tetrahedral carbons in it, it's going to have a plane of symmetry. So right, so this one we have right there. We have a plane of symmetry, right? So, so this side of the molecule is exactly the same as that side of the molecule. But if we go, so, so this is um, butanol. So if we go to this, um, to lactic acid, um, so if we try to do, if we try to make a plane of symmetry like right here, right, this is fine, the blue is fine, the green is fine, but the OH over here, if it looked over um, the on the other side, it would be, you know, just see the hydrogen. Um, it's like if you were trying to look in the mirror and then suddenly your head is gone, um, right? It's not, um, it, it's not, um, symmetrical. So this is indicating that it's a chiral molecule. We have one of those tetrahedral carbons in there and that um, we can make a non-superimposable mirror image. So like that. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to look at um, to see if we can find the chiral centers within the molecules. Um, and so remember when we're trying to find these things, we, we're trying to at um, two, four different things. Okay. If you can get a tie um, with the things, we'll go over this um, in a minute. I'll show an example. What you can do is then go one, you know, if you're saying, well, this is, this is, this side is this, you know, this, this atom is the same as this atom. Um, if it's a tie, then you go one further out. And then you keep, you keep working out until you find a difference. Um, with that. And so the, um, um, if you don't find a difference, then that, those two groups would be the same. It's not a tetrahedral carbon. Um, but if they are, the, uh, but if you find a difference, then those, those things are, um, you know, are different. It could be 10 atoms away. That's fine. Uh, it's just that the groups need to be different. Um, and so if we look here, right, and so you can pretty much, so if you say, is there, um, is the carbon chiral? Can you find a chiral carbon? Well, you know, anything that has multiple hydrogens on it is automatically going to be um, a chiral, right? So that because um, you can't have four things, right? So it's got three hydrogens, two hydrogens. So, so you can automatically get rid of these guys. Right, and so the only one, the only potential one, could be here. Now we do have stuff to check it, right? Um, so like that, and so for here, right, we have a hydrogen, right, a fluorine, a, you know, a CH two and a CH two, okay. Um, so you say, well, that's a tie. It's, it's the same thing. No, 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 no. There's still more atoms here. So what you do, right, is then you you come out and now you compare this one, right? Now you compare the green ones. So CH three to CH two. So you're just going to hop back out, or hop one over, um, and now you got a CH2 and a CH3. Ah, these, there's a difference here. So that means this group here is different from this group here. So, so that means we have a chiral carbon right there. So that's our chiral carbon um, because it has four different things hanging off of it. Okay. Now for this one, right, so if you, you draw on um, all the hydrogens, right, so we have CH2, CH2. So all of these CH2s are automatically disqualified because right? they have two hydrogens on it, okay? And so what we do, the, the only potential one could be this one here. 
Okay, and so what are the things we have on there? Well, let's see. We have a we have a hydrogen, we have a chlorine, and we have a CH2 and a CH2. Well, obviously the hydrogen and chlorine are different. But these two are the same. So what do we do? We hop one one out. And so now we compare, right? CH2 and CH2. Now you compare these two. Well, that's a tie. So we just keep going. And what ends up happening is you end up here where you're on top of each other. Right? So CH2, CH2, you know, CH2, CH2, CH2. And so that means this side of the molecule is exactly the same as that side of the molecule. And so this one is, um, this one is we, we consider this to be a chiral because there's no chiral centers on, on the molecule. Okay. okay, so the biological significance of this, okay, this is actually incredibly important um, because it turns out that enantiomers, okay, have the exact same chemical properties, whether it's um, melting point, boiling point, whatever. Um, so that there's only two ways in which they're different. Um, one of the ways is how they interact with other biological molecules, uh, excuse me, other chiral molecules. Okay, so, so biological, you know, if you're talking about proteins and DNA and all that sort of stuff, all of those have chiral centers, right? We talk about D-amino acids and L-amino acids, things like that. Um, all of those things mean they have a chiral center in them. Um, that, and so proteins are built up of chiral molecules and, and things like that. And so those are formed the receptors and whatnot. Okay. And so some of the classic ones are, are um, what we use in foods. So carbone um, is this. If you take the mirror image of it, like this one, the mirror image of it. So this one, this version um, smells like caraway. This one smells like spearmint because it's, it's interacting with a different receptor. Um, with that. This one here, this asparagine, this amino acid, um, this one has a sweet taste, while the, this version of asparagine has a bitter taste. Um, and you can say, well, that's no big deal. Um, the problem is if, when you get into, into medicine, um, it can be a much, much bigger deal. And so the, the classic example of this is thalidomide. Um, and so this was marketed in the, in the 50s and 60s um, as, a, um, as a sedative, but also to help women with, um, with um, the morning sickness. Um, so by that, and so it's not ethical to um, to give this to um, to pregnant women because you you don't know what's going to happen to the to the fetus, and so they gave it to the next obvious um, candidate, which would of course be men, uh, and it worked just fine with men, and so by that, and so they started giving this to um, to women, it worked just fine, but the problem is they noticed this um, people had started to notice this um, this increase in the amount of, of massive birth defects in, in children, and they were able to directly link this back to um, thalidomide use. And you can actually get to the point where you can tell when the mother had taken thalidomide by what the, uh, um, what the defects were. Um, it was never actually approved in the FDA. It was mostly uh, in Europe. Um, so that, and actually, they, I think in Germany, they sold it over the counter. Um, and, so that. and so it turns out that the problem is the, uh, um, the, uh, it's, this version of the thalidomide um, is actually the sedative that works just fine. Um, like that. But this this version of it was also included in there. Um, when they made it, they made they included both versions because um, they didn't think you know this is this one here. This one won't do anything. It turns out that this one um, sets off a um, this what's called a teratogen. It, it causes the birth defects. Um, like that. And so you know you, you may ask, well, why don't you just um, just include, why didn't you just have this one? Um, and it turns out that um, these things, we'll talk about this in the end of the chapter, these things will actually interconvert. So if you have this, if you let it sit a while, it'll actually, can, you'll start to build this up. Now, thalidomide's actually still on the market. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be for, for pregnant um, uh, pregnant women. Um, and actually, it, it's, thalidomide, is, it's used in, um, in the treatment of leprosy, of all things, um, but also multiple myeloma, uh, which is a blood cancer. Um, some of that, and this class of drugs is also used as an acne medication. Um, some of that, but it has what's called a black. It's not thalidomide. It's it's a similar drug. Uh, it has a big black box warning, of and it says you know, you know, women who take this, they have to take, um, they have to be on birth control, and they have to take a monthly um, pregnancy test um, in order to be able to have access to this um, to this drug. Um, about that, and so because they want to avoid the potential for, for birth defects, but you know this is this is an issue, right? You're you're talking about a three dimensional system in the body; it's really complex, and so you need to minimize. So getting the right stereoisomer it can be incredibly important. Um, so how do we um, 
tell another chemist. So we're gonna we're going to to write her a letter, and we're going to say, um, you know, we, um, you, you know, this is the molecule that we made. How do we tell that? I mean, you know, how do we tell her what the um, how the molecules are, are oriented in space? Okay. And so what they came up with is this RS designation. Okay. And it's how they. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go high priority to low priority on these things, and the uh, and how they rotate. If they rotate to the right um, from high to low, the uh, um, we call that that we're going to use the the Latin for right, which was rectum. Uh, if they rotate to the left, we're going to use the the Latin for left, which is sinister. And so, um, so they're either going to have the R or the S designation. Okay, right. So sinister is, is when things are on the left, right? They thought things that are on the left were, were evil. Um, that's the sinister name. Um, okay, so how do we set the priorities? Okay, and so there was two competing, um, you know, there's two competing camps. I don't and, and we, I don't remember what the other one was off the top of my head. Um, but the Con Engel Prelog rules won. Okay, it was like you know, jets versus sharks or Crips versus Bloods or whatever it is. Anyway, one camp ended up winning, and it was this camp here. Uh, and what they said is, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at you know, where the chiral center is, and we're gonna look at the four things that are um, attached to it, and the, the heaviest thing wins, okay? So it's all about atomic number, or atomic mass, okay? So the heavier, heavier it is, the, more, um, the, the higher the priority, okay? And then what we're gonna do, so mass wins, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at, at those, and if it's a tie, so let's say there's, there's you know, the, we have these two groups, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if it's tied, then let's look at the bonds, okay? And so this one, right, so let's assume that there's a carbon here. This one would have, right, one carbon-carbon bond um, and three carbon-hydrogen. This one here, right, would have two carbon-carbon bonds and um, two CH bonds, okay? Now, the heaviest bond, which is what we're, what we're interested in, 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 both, in this both case, is carbon-carbon, is so that's a tie, um, and so the, uh, but this one would have two of them. This one would have one. We have a difference. So this one has a higher priority. And so what, what we do is we, we go and we radiate out looking at these bonds uh, until we find a difference. Okay. And so if we have multiple bonds, that's why we, that's why you usually look at the bonds rather than the, the atoms themselves, because you have to remember. So lots of times, most books will talk about, you know, listing these as the, as the atoms, but what you have to do is you have to remember a double bond counts as two. Right? So that's why I look at the bonds. So you always have four, you know, what are the four bonds? Um, and then you look at the heaviest one, okay? So and you can do it however you'd like, um, stuff like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so you rank the bonds. So you look at, so here's our, car, here's our chiral center here. So that's our carbon, okay? And what you do is you say, okay, well, I've got a fluorine, a hydrogen, uh, a carbon, and a carbon, okay? And whenever you can set a priority, you do, okay? So the, so the, um, highest priority, we're going to list as one. So fluorine is heavier than carbon, which is heavier than, than hydrogen here. And so, so this one is going to be number one. That's going to be the highest priority. The carbons are going to be the next highest priority. We just don't know which one's two and three. But we know the hydrogen is going to be the lowest, and so that's going to be four. Okay. Now for these, okay, I'm going to come back here so you can see. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so we're going to look at the bonds. Okay, and so for this one, we have two carbon-carbon bonds, right? So, so there's a carbon-carbon bond here, and there's a carbon-carbon bond here, and then two CH bonds. Same thing here for this for this carbon. So now for this one, right, it's, we have one carbon-carbon, two carbon-carbon. So we have two carbon-carbon bonds. So the heaviest bond is, for both of them, is carbon, and they both have two. So that's a tie. Okay, so what do we need to do? Just like we did with the other one, we need to hop one, further, one place further. Okay, and oop. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going we're going to compare this this to this. Okay, and for here we've got one carbon chlorine bond, one carbon carbon two CH. For here, hold on. Oop. If I hit the right. Here we've got one carbon carbon. Right, it's right here, and then three CH bonds. Now the heaviest one for here is right there. The heaviest one up here is is the carbon chlorine bond. Chlorine is heavier than carbon. It doesn't matter. They could have four carbon, um, four carbon carbon bonds. It wouldn't matter. One CH bond is always going to be heavier than four carbon carbon bonds. 
Um, so this one gets the priority. Um, this one has a higher priority than the, the, the chain that has the chlorine is going to be the chain um, that doesn't. Now, you say, like, well, that's pretty easy. You can just look at the molecule and say, well, if it's got a heavy bond. No, 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 no. You have to be very, very disciplined in here because test makers are always trying to, to screw you up um, in that you have to start radiating out. And as soon as you find a difference, you stop. Okay? Um, so that you set the priority and then you leave it alone. It doesn't matter about the other uh, about the other. Um, way you know what else is hanging off of that as you're radiating out as soon as you as you find something you you uh, you set it okay okay so now how do we do this okay so there's two major ways you can do this the, the way that and there's there's a bunch of other ones and you can you can look them up we're gonna we're gonna talk about two of them uh, but again it's it's all about um, what your preference is um, for this okay and so what we're going to do is the uh, um, the uh, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set okay so we're going to use the first way we're going to do is, is what's called the steering wheel method. So that in that method, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to the uh, set number four going away from you, okay. Um, the, and so in order to do that, okay, so, that, so you have to rotate the molecule so that the four is going away, okay, and so when you do that, okay, so, so for this one, right, four is going this way, right, so three is over here, well, here let me type this one, so, um, right, so the four is going this way, the blue is over here, um, say the two, which is green, um, is right here, and then the, the red is back there. If we rotate this, Okay, if we rotate this back, okay, what ends up happening is, right, they rotate like this, and so now it goes one, two, three. So it, it one, two, three, and then four is going away from you, and so it's going to be going like this, and so it's like turning, the, it's going to the right, um, it's going clockwise, just like you turn a steering wheel if you want to turn the car to the right, uh, we, we designate that as the R, okay? If instead we had the, the enantiomer of this, right, so... Now we have here, so here is one, two, three, like this. If we had it going like this, it's going counterclockwise. Um, and so the, uh, um, and it's just like turning the steering wheel to the left. And so um, that this would be considered a, um, an S configuration. Okay. So the, uh, um, and so, but the, but the big thing is that the number four has got to be going away. Okay. So that's the important thing. Otherwise, this doesn't work. Now, this is the method I learned way back when, um, and stuff like that. I still use it. Um, it. It's a little weirder, okay. But the nice thing is, you don't have to reorient the molecule in space, okay. You don't, you don't have to worry about how, being able to do this. What you do is instead of rotating rotating the molecule so the four is behind, what you do is you, you have your thumb be, um, your your thumb be where, however the four is going. Okay, and so if this is, um, let's say this is, um, you know, one, two, three, and then four, what you would do is you'd have your thumb pointing wherever four is, and then you have your fingertips sweep from, you know, the, the one, two, three, right? So if one is up here, your fingertips would start up here, and then two is here, so your fingertips are over here, and three is down here, so it sweeps one, two, three like this. And your, your thumb always has to point where four is. So if it's four is over here, you, you just rotate your wrist, right? So, so, you know, one would be out to the side, two is down, three is, um, three is going up, right? Usually if you can get one to two, you're fine. So one is over here, right? So your fingertips would be out here. Two is going away, so it's going down, and three. Since I'm using my right hand, it's R, okay? And if, you, you know, if it's over here, then you gotta uh, rotate your, your thumb, your, your thumb so it's this way, so one is over here, two is over there, so one like that, one, two, three, um, stuff like that. And so you don't have to reorient the molecule, you just have to rotate your wrist. Now, the nice thing is since it's, you know, well, obviously, you know, if it's on paper, you can actually rotate the paper so it's a little more comfortable for you. But if you can sweep between your fingertips between one and two, you're good um, to be able to do that, okay? And so if you were to, to, you know, so if I had that same thing where, you know, it goes, um, right, one, two, three, like this, if I try to do this with my left hand, okay, so, you know, your one is here and the two is over here. If I try to, ow, 
right? So that, if I tried to, to curl it back like this, to go one, two, one, two, um, it's not gonna happen. Um, or you need to break your fingers, right? So, that, so, so that's how you can use it. You, and you'll see me sometimes when I'm looking at this, you'll see me sweep with my hands, you know, rotate this around. Um, it was really funny because there was like 100 people in my, uh, maybe 100, 150 people in my organic class, and this was the only way we knew. And so I remember looking up for the exam and, and seeing all these people in like weird sort of their hands flipping around and stuff like that, trying to get this thing, trying to answer the questions. Um, but anyway, okay, so here we go. So we've got we've got this molecule, right? So, so your stereo, um, your chiral center is there. Okay, so we need to determine if it's R or S. Okay, and so we're going to look at, the first thing we're going to do is look at the four atoms that are directly attached to that carbon. Um, so we have fluorine, hydrogen, carbon, carbon. So fluorine is the, is the heaviest, so it gets one, two, three. Um, and hydrogen is, is the lightest, so it's going to be four. Four, that's a really terrible four. So now we're going to figure out two or three, right? So this one here, right, it has two carbon-carbon bonds, two CH bonds. Here, this, again, we have two carbon-carbon bonds, two CH. Okay. The heaviest bond for both of these is carbon-carbon, and they both have two of them, so it's a tie. Okay. So what do we do? We come out one further. Okay. And so now we're going to compare, right, this one to this one. Okay. And so for this one, it's, um, you know, we have, this one we have two carbon-carbon bonds, right, two CH. Um, here we only have one carbon-carbon bond, three CH bonds from that carbon. So again, the heaviest on both of them is carbon-carbon. Um, and so for that one, right, so for that, so this one has two of them, um, so that, and this only has one, so that makes this chain um, to be a higher priority than, um, than this one. And so it ends up orienting like this. And lots of times what I'll do is I will redraw it um, because you can get a lot of, um, you know, scribbles on here. And so this one's the two, this one's three, one, and four, okay? So in order for this, so if we do the steering wheel method, okay, so if this is, say, um, if this is one, two, three, and then four is over here, what we have to do is we have to rotate the molecule like that um, and to get the four behind. And when that happens, so when we rotate, oop, rotate, what ends up happening is one stays where it is, the three slides over here, um, the two is over here, right? the two slides up, okay, one is here, two, three, and then the four is going behind. And so notice how now you're going like this, you're going clockwise, right? You're turning your steering wheel to the right, and so this must be in the R configuration, okay? So, as we rotate this around, right, that slides over here, the two slides up, um, the four slides back, um, so it's one, two, three, like that. Now, if we were going to do the, the hand method, our, our thumb would be pointed um, this way, um, because that's where four is, and the um, one is coming out that way, so we start our fingertips up there, and then two is behind, so it's, it would be behind the, the iPad. And then three is above, so it would go, if you go one to two, you're good, right? So, so it's going to go one to two. And so the uh, um, I'm rotating with my right hand, um, so it's R, okay? And using that way, I didn't have to redraw this. I didn't have to see it about redrawing it, just move your wrist, okay? So those are the two, those are two different ways. If there's another way that you can do it, there's this flipping method, there's some other um, ways of doing it, um, so that, and that's totally fine. Um, these are the two that I usually teach, um, and, but if there's other ones, have at it. Okay, so for this one, okay, again, you're going to talk about um, this carbon, hydrogen, deuterium, and that carbon, okay? And so for this one, whoop, right, the carbons are heavier than, so, so deuterium is just, is a heavy hydrogen, it's, it's a, hydrogen with a, a neutron in it. So it, this is going to be heavier than that hydrogen. The carbons are going to be heavier than either one of these. Okay, so we don't know what one and two is, but we know that this is two, and this is, oh, I'm sorry, this is three, and this is four. Okay, so we don't know about this one, right? So we're going to look at the bonds, okay? And so for this one, this has two carbon-carbon, 
and two CO bonds, right? He's got one, two. This one has, right, it's got the one carbon-carbon, right? One CO bond, right, right here. Now, you don't have to worry about this, um, the, the OH bond, right? We don't care about that because it's just the, the four that are four bonds that are directly connected to that carbon, okay? So we're not to that, looking at the OH. It's just looking at that carbon-oxygen bond. And then we have the two um, CH bonds. And so for here, right, the heaviest bond on both of these is carbon-oxygen, but this one has two, this one only has one, so this is a higher priority than this one. So that's one, that's two. And so what we do is we say, hey, so, so three, right, so this is on a wedge, um, two, one, and then four, and hey, this, is, this, is, this works out really well because the four is already going behind, um, and so if you come in here, right, it's rotating counterclockwise, Right. Let's say the steering wheel to the left, and so it would be S. Okay, if you want to do the steering wheel method, right, you would your thumb would have to be pointed down, right, because that's how it goes. Your fingertips start up here and then cycle um, to the to the left over here, and then right. Again, if you can get one to two, you're fine. So one, two, and then three. Since I'm using my left hand, it's S. Okay. Well, good job. Okay, now for this one, the stereo center is actually right here, okay? And you say, wait, wait, hold on, there's only three bonds here. Don't you need four? Yes, right? It's a skeletal structure. What don't we have? We don't have to draw the hydrogen. Well, where is the hydrogen? Well, it is, um, it turns out that, that you know, you can pretty much assume most bonds are going to have two regular bonds, a, da uh, a wedge, and a dash. And so if, if a hydrogen isn't shown along with a dash, it's probably... Um, that hydrogen's the one that's on the dash, okay? And so if we draw that in, okay, um, so that so we can figure out what's going on, okay? And so for here, right, so, that, so, so if this is it, we're going to look at this hydrogen, this CH2, right, that CH2, and the C. And it turns out, you know, it's hard to see, but this is CH2 and the CH3 down here, okay? Um, and, and so if we look at these, so we look at this, 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 and this, Right, those are the four things attached to that carbon. Okay, the carbons are all um, are all equal, but they're all heavier than that hydrogen. So this is definitely going to be four. Okay, now now we need to look, start looking at the bonds. And so if we look at this one versus this one, right, versus this one, right. So here we've got two carbon carbon bonds, um, two carbon hydrogen. Right, again here two carbon carbon, two carbon hydrogen. Here we just have the four carbon carbon bonds. Right, so we got carbon carbon bond here, two here, and then this dash, and so we have four carbon carbon. So for each one of these, the heaviest is a carbon carbon, right? But this one has four of them, these only have two. So this one must have be a higher priority than either one of these two. But these two are a tie, right? Because they both have the two carbon carbon. Um, so what do we do? We go out one further, right? And so here, right, we're gonna draw the hydrogen that, that's not drawn in there. Um, here again, CH2, so now we're gonna compare um, this one to this one. Okay, so for this one here, right, this one has three carbon-carbon bonds, one CH. This one we have two carbon-carbon bonds, two CH. Okay, again, the carbon-carbons right, are the heaviest, but this one has three, this one only has two. And so for this one, it is, um, that means this side is a higher priority than that side, and so this ends up being, um, Two. Uh, this one ends up being two. Ooh, crummy. Um, and this ends up being three. Okay. And so if we redraw this, it's going to look like this. Four. One. And then this is two. And then this is three. Okay. And so if we want to do the string wheel method, right? Um, again, we're going to look at this one. So. If, Four is actually coming out at you. Uh, one is going behind. Two is the blue. Um, the white is three. We, in order to do the string wheel method, right, we've got to rotate that around. And so we have to rotate it like this. And so when we, whoop. <laughs> so um, let's try this again. Um, right, so, so we have to rotate this back. Okay, and when that happens, when you rotate, right, so what's going to happen is these two switch, and then those two switch. And so 2 ends up over here, 3 is over here, 
one is over here, and then the four is behind. Okay, and so if you get the, so how does it rotate? Well, it's rotating clockwise, like that. Um, and so since it's rotating uh, clockwise, um, it's R. Okay. Now, if you were going to try to um, to do the hand method here, um, what I would suggest you do is you rotate this. <laughs> you can rotate your paper, okay? And so, again, the four is coming out at you, so that's how your thumb is going to be. And so the one starts over here, right, on that side, and then two is over here, so one, two. And then three is back, so one, two, three. Since I'm using my right hand, it's R. So, yeah, so don't forget to even rotate your paper, okay? Okay, so, hey, we got it right. And so this is limoline, okay? And so this version, this enantiomer actually smells like citrus. The S one, um, the, it's an antiomer. The S, if this was an S steris under here, um, it would smell like pine. And so if you have something like pine salt, um, it smells kind of citrusy, it smells like kind of pine. Well, it's because it has both enantiomers in there, okay? It has, um, the, so, so that you're getting hit by, by, both, by both smells. Okay. Now for naming chiral centers, okay, so, so chiral compounds, what we do is we say, okay, if there's only one chiral center, we can, we can list it just at the, at the very, very start, okay, just, just like, and it doesn't matter what it is, um, those R's and S's are going to be at the very, very front, just like the main chain is always, always, always at the back, okay, the R and S's are always, always, always first. Okay, if there's only one chiral center, okay, and this is this is a wedge. Th this is heavy line. This is considered a wedge. Um, if the uh, if the, you can just put R or S out front there, and people will know well where there's the chiral center is. It's either in the R configuration or S, depending on what you designate. If there are multiple ones, then you have to tell which one is which, and you put them in in um, you know in numerical order. So what it's saying is that carbon three we're in an R configuration. At carbon four we're in an S. At carbon five, we're an S, and then the rest of the name is normal, okay? And this would all, you know, the, all of this, no matter what it would be. So if this was a methyl, right, you'd have, you know, two, four, dichloro, five, methyl, something like that. But you would have this out front all, you know, so that always, okay? But you have to tell what's carbon you're talking about. If there's only one um, chiral center in the molecule, you can just put RS and we'll be able to figure it out, okay? Now, if you're trying to go from name to structure, okay, the easiest way that I've been able to, to figure this out is to actually just go in and draw the, the name without any wedges and dashes, okay, and then add wedge and dashes as needed where that chiral center is. Now, you can put them in however you want, and so it, it's usually advantageous to put them in so that, say, the steering, you know, so the, the if you have to put in hydrogen, put the hydrogen on the dash, so it's, you're automatically in the, the steering wheel configuration. Then what you do is you say, okay, is that molecule going to be, is this in the R or the S configuration? If, you know, and you've got a 50-50 chance, right? If you get it correct, yay. If you don't, all you got to do is switch the wedges and the dashes. That's all you got to do. And then it's automatically the other stereoisomer, okay? And so if we were going to say, okay, draw two um, S2 chloropentane, okay? So you'd start off with two, with two chloropentane, and then the chiral center is right here. Okay, and so what you would do is you would say, okay, let's put in, right, there's a hydrogen that needs to go in here too. So let's go ahead and just put the hydrogen on a dash um, because then it's all set up for the steering wheel method. Okay, and so you go and set the priority. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Now, when you check it, right, so, you know, this the steering wheel method, right, the four is going behind, right, so it's here, like this. Uh-oh, we have, we are in the, um, our configuration. So how do we do this? So, so what do we have to do? Well, we just switch it. We come in here and we say, okay, let's just put now the chlorine on the dash and then the hydrogen on the, on the front and voila. So, so if this is the R, then if you flip it, this is the S version. That's all you got to do. Okay. So you're going to, if you, half the time you're going to get correct, the other half, you have to get right. So you don't have to think about, well, this is, where does this happen? No, just put it down there, figure it out. If you get it wrong, flip the wedge and dash. You're automatically right, assuming you got the original configuration correct. Now, the other way, right? So we talked about before with, with an antimers, right? So they have the same boiling point, melting point, solubility, whatever, um, with that. So there's actually two ways that, that, you can, that they're different. 
One is how they interact with other chiral molecules. The other way is um, what's called optical activity. And so if you look at the R2-butanol versus S, right, they have the same boiling point and melting point. Um, these here, right, RR versus SS, these are enantiomers, right? They have the same melting point. Um, look at that. So, but the other way that we can do this, and this was one of those weird quirks that, that came up in, in the 1800s, is that if you have plain polarized light, so light's going to come at you and it's going to come up like this and like this, and like the waves are going to come in randomly uh, all are in there. If you put a gate in front of it, right, so that what happens is only the ones that are oriented with the gate, I think that's how it works, um, are going to be coming through. Okay, so this is how polarized light comes in, um, polarized sunglasses. What's happening is the ones that are coming to the side um, bounce off the... Um, um, you know, bounce off things and cause glare. Um, so that, and so what you're doing is you're trying, you're you're knocking those out because only ones that can come through the gates um, are the um, to get through. And so you can effectively knock out the glare. So it turns out the enantiomers, if you were to put in a polarized light, so you know what's coming in, and you make a solution um, in a in a glass tube, um, and you let the light come in. If you put a detector on there. What's going to happen is the rotate will the the uh, enantiomer will come out rot that that light will come out rotated, and one enantiomer what's going to happen is it's going to rotate it clockwise, and the other one's going to, the other enantiomer does it counterclockwise. Okay, and we've done this. It's it's I mean we have this in the lab. It's, I've used it. It's, it's it's a pretty slick little little instrument, but those are the two ways that that um, that enantiomers are different. Okay, and so and they'll. So one, so we'll go negative, and the other one will go positive. So, so, so how many degrees, you know, clockwise does it go, right? So, you know, versus negative, which is counterclockwise. Okay. Now, there's no correlation between R and S and D and L. Okay. So, so if it's clockwise, what's called it's called dexter rotor, dexter rotation, right? So another name for sugar is dextrose. Um, Dextrose is there is because it rotates it pause, you know, rotates it clockwise. If it rotates in the in the counterclockwise direction, there's actually it's what's called lever rotary, uh, or L. And so this is um, this is a, a notation, an experimental notation. This has nothing to do with R and S. Well, I mean, I'm sure it does, but it, it but you can't say well it's D, so it must be R. No, 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 no. Those are two separate things. Okay, D and L and R and S. Totally different. One's just our own convention to, um, to let people know the orientation. The other one um, is an actual experimental go into the lab and, and look at that. Okay, and so um, one of the, the classic experiments in chemistry was actually done by Louis Pasteur of pasteurization fame. Um, he was a he was a brilliant chemist as well as microbiologist. Um, and so and so one of the things that they would do is they would look at this this compound called ammonium sodium ammonium tartrate. This is one of the more amazing compounds that you know. They, they looked at um, because it was one of the few really good chiral compounds that they could get. It actually comes from it, it's the tartrate it comes from tartar. It's this white stuff that comes off the inside of the that precipitates um, in in wine barrels. And so they noticed that sometimes um, the con, you know it would rotate this this polarized light to clockwise. Sometimes it would go counterclockwise. We couldn't figure out what was going on with it. And so what he did is he took some of this a solution of of ones that. And it turns out that if you um, if you have a mixture of the two, okay, the uh, um, it doesn't rotate light, okay. And so what he did is he let this thing let a solution of this just evaporate, right? He basically made rock candy, um, so that. And he looked at it under a microscope and he noticed that there were some of these that had this orientation of the crystal, and some of them had a this orientation of the crystal. And so he he took tweezers and he move the crystals into one pile or the other. So all the crystals that look like this went over in this pile. All the crystals that look like this went over in this pile. And then what he did is he took all of these and um, dissolved them in water, put them back to the polarimeter, and voila, they, they rotate, you got the rotation back. And then these guys rotated it the other way. And so the, uh, uh, and so what he was able to show is that what are these things called, um, the, uh, that it depends on the orientation of the atoms, right? Because they're going to crystallize slightly differently because their orientation is slightly different. Depending on orientation is, is dependent on which way it's going to rotate that light. If you've got both of them in there, it's what's called a racemic mixture, okay? And and so sometimes you'll you'll denote it as a little squiggly line. That means you have both. So this methyl half the time is on the wedge, half the time is on the dash. Um, some of that. And so if you have if you have both of them. Um, You'll sometimes be denoted as a DL or a plus minus because it has both the D and the L version in there. Um, with that, and so if you have racemic mix, uh, ibuprofen, 
um, you have half of it D and er, you know D and half of it L. Okay, so half of this half the time this shared center is going to be R, the other half is going to be S. And it turns out it's the S um, enantiomer that's actually going to be the um, the active ingredient. So if you have this version, you have half active, half not active. Um, here you would have all active. So um, for that, but if you were to, to take um, polarimetry of, of this one, it would rotate. Um, it wouldn't rotate light. This one would. Now, is it D or L? I don't know because they are, the R and the S doesn't tell me. You would have to go in and, and I'd have to go look it up. Okay. Now, one of the things that you can say is if you have a mixture of these things, it's not always 50-50. You can have 90-10 or whatever uh, of one or the other. Sometimes you'll see this denoted as an antimeric excess. And so all you're doing is you're taking um, the EE and just finding the difference between it. And so you take the um, how much the percentage of the D, uh, you know, of one minus the the, the percentage of the other, and the uh, and so we would designate this as percent E E. Um, and so the uh, uh, and so you sometimes see in a catalog the percent E E would be ninety four. Well, that means you've got ninety seven of one and four of the or and three of the other. So um, so when you see that that that's what that means. Okay. So with the synthesis, right? So, but that, so it turns out that, that making chiral molecules can be really difficult, right? So but that in, if you're not in a, um, you know, if making one enantiomer of the other gets to be, um, can be quite difficult. Um, and so what the, uh, um, the uh, and so if you don't have any, if, if all your molecules are, are achiral, your, even if you make a, if you make a, a new stereocenter, what you're going to do is you're going to make the racemic mixture. Half the time it's going to go make the R, the other time it's going to the other half time it's going to make an S because there's no preference on one way or the other. Okay, um, with that. And so the only way that you can do that is if you have chiral building blocks. If you if there's some sort of um, chiral molecule within the reaction. And so if you have process, uh, so if you're making cytolipin, um, you're coming in here, you're taking the um, you're taking this ketone to the chiral amine. Um, if you do it a chemically, right, so, so you do a hydrogenation um, to reduce that down, and you notice this RST butyl josephos. And so it's a rhodium catalyst, and it has stereo, it has stereochemistry in it. Um, and, and so that's, you know, the, the uh, um, and so you'll know, um, so this particular one's with this, the enantiomer of, of this, um, of this catalyst would probably give you the opposite stereo, um, the opposite um, stereocenter here, or product. Now, the other way you can do it is if you do an enzyme, right? Enzymes are made up of chiral building blocks, right? Chiral amino acids. So it is also a chiral catalyst, and so it can also do this as well. Okay. Okay, so if you have multiple chiral centers, okay, and so the easiest way to do this, if you're looking at two molecules, okay, is to say, okay, if I have switched all of the wedges and dashes, they're enantiomers, even if there's only one, right? So, so we've switched, have we switched all of them? Yes, then they're enantiomers. If we have not switched them all, not all, the wedges and dashes have been flipped, then they're diastereomers. So if we have 20 um, stereocenters within the, uh, the molecule, then, you know, if we, the, the only way that we can make an enantiomer is to switch all 20. If they're all on wedges, I switch, you know, if we're gonna switch all the wedges and dashes, um, to the other other way, we have to switch all, all 20. Um, if we only switch 19, they're diastereomers. If we only switch one, diastereomers. Five, diastereomers. Okay, so enantiomers is a very su a very um, small subset of, of the stereocenters. Okay. So here, right? So um, for diastereomers, right? You're 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 switching this one, or you're you're holding this one fixed, but switching these two. So you're not you're not switching all. So the relationship between these two are diastereomers. Here we're switching all three, right? Um, the, so therefore these are enantiomers. So what's the relationship between these two? Well, these are diastereomers, right? Because when you go from here to here, right, you've only flipped this one, but these two are, have not. And so that, so these are actually the same molecule. So like that. So, okay. But the relation again, the relationship between this one and this one, right? In antiverse, because you flipped all the wedges for dashes and vice versa. Now the other way you can do it is you're just saying if you have the R configuration, you just do the S. Okay. Now I would highly recommend you watching this little YouTube video. It's the it's a um, 
you, you can click on the link in, in the slides. It's, it's talking about um, the power of n to the 2 um, of binary numbers. Um, it was produced, I think, made in, I think, 1961, um, and it's a pretty pretty cool little little video. Um, but it talks about how um, even with something as small as 2, if you add it, if you multiply it by itself multiple times, it gets big in a hurry. And so this is what this is showing you is the maximum number of stereoisomers that you can get um, depending on how many chiral centers you've got. How many chiral carbons do you have? Um, and the uh, um, will tell you how many different isomers, right? So, with that. so if you only have one chiral center, you know, you can have R or you can have S, right? If you have two, right, you can have both of them be R, both of them be S, the first one be R, or the second one be R, right? And if you do third, right, you can do R, 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 right? R, R, S, right? This is R, S, S, and so on and so forth. And there's eight, right? So, that, so there's eight possible stereo, stereoisomers if you have three chiral carbons. And notice how it gets, you know, it goes up exponentially, right? So, that, so if you have six chiral centers, right? you could have 64 different combinations of, of wedges and dashes um, in, the, um, in the molecule, right? And so this, this is why, you know, and natural products in particular that you can make to use, use to make drugs, these things can be very complicated and very um, specific stereo centers. Um, and, and so, the, uh, um, and so they, they can be really difficult to, to, to make synthetically because you have to get them all correct. So here's, here's, a, here's a typical question. So if you say, okay, so let's draw all this, the possible stereoisomers. Um, so that, and so what we can do is we can say, okay, let's, let's start. So here's the chiral centers here and here. Okay, all the rest of them are CH2. So what we can do is we can say, okay, well, let's put these on wedges, both of them on wedges, right? And then, hey, let's put them both on dashes, right? That's fine. And then we can put one on a wedge and one on a dash. Right? Or we can put this on a dash, this on a wedge. Okay, so there's the four, right? Because there's two chiral centers, right? So it's two to the two, so that would be four, right? But you have to be careful, right? Because it turns out that if you look closely, these two molecules are actually the same ones. Even though they're um, right? So if I have this one, well, let me move this up so you can see. Right? So if I have this, right, where they're both pointing down, okay? Oh, excuse me, both, I spent like this. So they're both pointing up, right? If I had them both pointing down, all I gotta do is just turn it over like that. And it's the same molecule, okay? If all I, if all I have to do is just flip it like this, not break any bonds, flip it. They are in fact the same compound. Uh, and, and so there's no way that, so these, it turns out, these are the antimers of each other. Um, and so this one here, and so for that one, what you have to do, so those are gonna be different, right? Those are stereoisomers. So you have to be careful because that two to the end shows the maximum number you can have, not the actual ones, because sometimes you can get quirks where they are both the same. And so you have to be careful, okay? Right, so these two are the same. So it would either be these three or these three th that are your molecule. Okay, and the, the reason for this is what's um, is this little quirk. It doesn't come up that actually often in in day to day lab stuff, but it always comes up in in exams. It's what are called meso compounds, and this is these these are compounds that have um, chiral centers within them, right? So in this here, right, there's a chiral center here and there's a chiral center there. But there's a nice big plane of symmetry right there, okay? And so if you put a mirror right here, right, this hydrogen or this fluorine would, would see this fluorine, right? There's a, on a wedge, there's a hydrogen, right? That hydrogen, if you looked in the mirror, it would see this hydrogen. And so the, uh, um, so if you were to make the plane, if you were to make the enantiomer, they're in fact non-superimposable um, and stuff like that. And so... The, so you have to be careful. If you've, got, if you've got a plane of symmetry in the molecule, even if it has chiral centers, it could be this weird, quirky little meso um, exception um, to the rule. And so if you look at something like this, okay? So if you look at this molecule, if we put a plane of, if we put a plane of symmetry here, right? 
and you know there'd be hydrogens down here. If this bromine looked over um, stuff like that, so, so um, if it looks into the mirror, what is it going to see? It's going to see a chlorine. Well, that means it's not a plane of symmetry. So we've got a chiral center here and here, um, and so this one we just consider to be chiral. It'd be like looking in, um, looking in the mirror and seeing your sister's head, right? Kind of freaky. Um, stuff like that. So it's not a plane of symmetry. But here, right? We have again, we have these two plane, these two chiral centers. Right, um, so like that. But for here, right, we've got hydrogens, hydrogens. Right, if this bromine looks in the mirror, it sees a bromine. If this hydrogen looks in the mirror, it sees um, hydrogen. If this CH two looks in the mirror, it finds it sees CH two over here. And so here, even though it's got chiral centers, it is it is meso, and so um, it has a plane of symmetry. So it's, we consider that meso. Now for this one, this is a little tough, and this one actually got me the first time I did it. And a student actually pointed this out. This one here, you say, oh, it's got wedges and dashes. It must be chiral. There's no actual chiral centers here. And you were like, what? Um, well, look at it. So, so if we look here at that carbon, right, we have a CH2 and a CH2, right? So we have a hydrogen, chlorine, CH2, CH2. And so if we come here, right, we have another carbon, but it, we're coming back onto ourselves. So these are actually are not chiral centers, right, because this, this side is the same as that side. Same goes with this one. This side is the same as that side. Um, so there's no chiral. So this is actually it is is just purely a chiral, um, even though it has wesons and dashes. It has a um, you know cis and trans version. There's no chiral centers on this one, um, so you have to be careful. Okay. So for these um, chiral molecules, okay, where you have um, where you have these. Um, like this, you have to remember that you can get rotation around that, um, this bond here, right? Because it's not constrained by a ring, okay? You can get the, uh, um, you can get the, the, um, you can get rotation, okay? And so if you look at this, let me, let me build this here quickly. Um, and so if you, if you look at here, right? Oops. So here, so like these, this would be the methyl groups, okay? One's pointing up, one's, oh yeah, maybe we'll do it like this. Um, oh, actually, yeah, we'll do it like this. Oh yeah, hold on. Let me, let me see if I can get this correct. Nope, I had it right the first time. Should trust my gut. Okay, so... Right? If we have this, right? So the blue, you know, so, so we've got the two balls over here, the two balls over here, and we've got the white ones here. If we want to make this meso, see if it's meso, what we'd have to do is we'd have to rotate this around and see if there's a plane of symmetry right here. Because in this configuration, yeah, these, these red, red balls are the same. These blue balls are pointed in the same direction. But these white balls are pointing, one's pointed to the right, one's, you know, one's pointed up and one's pointed down. Okay, so what we'd have to do is we'd have to rotate this around so that if the white ones are, are pointed in the same direction, notice how the, um, now the blue and the red are, are in different orientations. So there's no plane of symmetry here. So this one's chiral, just plain old chiral. Okay. So the, uh, oh, where'd it go? Okay, now if... We came in here and we said, okay, let's do it. Let's have it like this, right? Where, you know, the blue balls where those methyl groups are. So, so here, one one of them is one of the blues is pointed, you know, this towards me and one is away from me. Okay. When we rotate that around, notice how now you know, the blues are over here, the reds are over here, and the whites are over here. There's a nice plane of symmetry right here. So if this looks in the mirror, it's going to see that white. If this one looks in the mirror, it's going to see that blue. If this red one looks in the mirror, it's going to see the red. So there's a beautiful plane of symmetry here. So this is, this one, oops. this is meso. So you have to be careful, okay, because you say, oh, that, that must be a plane of symmetry. No, these methyl, the, the, this, this methyl and this methyl are pointed in the wrong direction. When you try to get in the right direction, the OHs are pointing the wrong, wrong way. So, so you have to be careful.
So for Fisher projection, so this is one that was developed by Emil Fisher, um, and it was and it's used primarily in carbohydrates and amino acids. There's, there's no, I mean, most people just do the regular wedge and dash orientation. And what he said is he said, okay, if it's if the bond is in the horizontal, it's a wedge. If it's vertical, it's a dash, right? So 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 people think it looks like you know a, a bow tie, right? So it looks like you know so, sort of the 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 wedges are kind of pointed out, you just like how a bow tie would. Okay, but the weird thing is, okay, you have to be careful with how you draw this because if you rotate it 90 degrees, um, what happens is the wedges and dashes flip, right? Because the horizontal or the vertical lines become horizontal, so that means you you flip the wedges and dashes. The 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 horizontal becomes vertical again. You're going to go from a, a wedge to a dash, um, and and so what's going to happen is um, you actually end up making an antimer. So if you draw one version of the Fisher projection and then rotate it 90 degrees. What you've done, flip wedges and dashes, automatically becomes your um, your enantiomer. If you rotate it 180 degrees, now it's um, all the wedges stay wedges, all the dashes stay dashes. You've just redrawn the molecule just upside down. Um, and and so if you rotate it 180 degrees, it's um, it's the uh, unchanged. Okay, but my, the reason why we like it in, in carbohydrates is it is you can it's easy to spot differences. And so for here, it's allos. Notice how in this case, this one is pointed this way, but in here, it's pointed this way. And so here are the, here are the stereo centers, here, 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 and here. You've only flipped one of them um, from here over to there, the orientation of them. Um, and so th these mean they're diastereomers. If you flip all of them, all four, um, so, so you know right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, um, then they're an antimers. And so this one would, would rotate it clockwise. This version would rotate it counterclockwise. Okay, so there is some, some um, the, uh, so you can have stereocenters with cyclic compounds, right? There's a, there's a, you know, these are mirror engines of each other. But for here, right, there's, there's a nice plane of symmetry that goes right through here, right? So even though there's chiral centers, right, there's a plane of symmetry. So there is, um, there is this is a meso and notice how i'm slicing right through that carbon uh right through that ch2 that's fine you can slice right through an atom no big deal okay so here again you can slice through these right there so you can get these sort of temporary enantiomers if you do um if you do these chair flips you can get these sort of temporary um enantiomers okay. now Let's say you've done a synthesis with achiral stuff. You've made a mixture of R and S. So how do you separate them? Okay, you weren't able to figure out a, a synthesis where you only made R, where you only made S. The problem is, right, so R and S are going to have um, the exact same melting point, boiling point, solubility in ether and in, um, in THF and, and ethanol and hexane and whatever. Um, so, with that, so how do you do it? Well, it turns out what you do is you attach on another stereocenter, okay? And so if you attach an R to here and an R to here, now they become, so this version becomes a RR. This version becomes an RS. Now, diastereomers have slightly different properties to them themselves. It's only the enantiomers that are the same. Diastereomers have different properties. So now you can separate them. So now you're going to have a bucket. Um, you're going to have a, with the, with the, the R, RS, okay? Oh, excuse me, the RR. Um, and then you're going to have another bucket with the um, RS. Oh, excuse me, the SR. Excuse me. The SR. Okay. Now you've separated them. Now you can separate them. And then what you can do is then just remove. Um, you can then just do some more chemistry to get rid of that, um, that second R. And so here, now you've got... You remove the R, remove the R, uh, and so now you've got a bucket with just the R, and you've got another bucket with just the S, and so you've separated them. So how do you get rid of this? You, you make them temporarily into different diastereomers. Okay, so for stereochemistries, you can have ones that are not on carbon, so, so nitrogen um, is because a lone pair can be considered a thing. It can be considered a group. So right here, right, so, so the, the four things are this lone pair, a hydrogen, a um, the uh, um, a methyl and an ethyl, okay. Um, so with that, so 
you know, electrons are a heck of a lot less, um, you know, not nearly as heavy as, as hydrogen. So this would be the four, three, um, two, and one. Okay, and you can make a, a, a stereo. You can make the, the enantiomer of it. Um, that's, so now you can also do it as a quaternary, right? The nitrogen is going to have a charge, but that's fine. Um, it's it's not a thing. Um, some of that, so it's just a, a formal charge. So that lone pairs are a thing because they're actually electrons. Here it's just an accounting um, for it. Okay. Now one of the quirks of this is that nitrogen, if you have lone pairs. The lone pairs will actually um, do this weird tunneling thing where if you have this orientation and you let it sit around at room temperature, it'll actually go to this orientation. So you'll actually, if you make this, you'll automatically get the receiving mixture. So that, that's what was going on with the polonamide. The chiral center was on a nitrogen and that would flip back and forth and have issues. Um, and, and so that's why I would um, racemize. Um, other, other atoms don't do this. So if you had you know, a sulfur um, or a phosphorus or an oxygen or something like that that had um, lone pairs, they don't do that. It's just a quirk of the nitrogen. Okay. Now, if you have a, a quaternary center, then it, it won't do that. As, it won't do that either. And this can have big implications. And so the, the big one is what's called um, ameprazole, um, Prilosec, which you've probably seen the commercials for. It's for um, Herper. Um, so that. And so I, I believe it was AstraZeneca that was doing this. Um, they had this. It was, it was a good seller. Um, but it was coming off patent in 2001. And so what they decided to do is saying like, huh, well, this is a big seller. Um, and so they looked and they actually realized that it's the S enantiomer, which is here. Notice how it's the lone pairs coming off as a, as a dash. Um, yes, yeah, so that this is the active ingredient. Um, the, the R version didn't really do a whole lot. Okay. And so what they did is they said, hey, how about if we just, we just sell a pill that just has this uh, in there? And so what they did is they said, okay, we will we'll do a trial, right? So if we have ten mil, if we have a ten milligram pill of this and a ten milligram pill of this, right? Um, they went to the FDA and say, look, you know, what does this say? Oh, look, this is this is a lot better than that one. So you should get a, um, we should get this, and they approved it, um, stuff like that. And it went on to for another eleven years, and peak sales were about four billion dollars. So you probably made an extra thirty or forty billion dollars. But what's the trick? Well, this one was. Um, in your, your 10 milligrams of this one, right, it's five milligrams of the R plus five milligrams of the S, right? This one, the 10 milligrams, it's just 10 milligrams of the S. And so really all you're doing is you're getting a double dose of this. That's all it is. Um, and so the so they were able to extend out their patent without doing anything, any, any new wild and crazy um, chemistry or whatever it is or, or biology or a new molecule. It's just... Um, it's just a reform, a reformulation of, of the original primal stack, and they were able to extend out their patent portfolio before generics could come onto the market. And so they were able to make tens of billions of dollars extra money. Perfectly legal. Okay. Now, the last thing is we're going to talk about stereochemistry. We're going to talk about um, the uh, um, alkenes. Okay. Because remember, with alkenes, you can have both a cis and a trans. But in order to do that, you have to have a hydrogen, um, one hydrogen on both sides, or one hydrogen on each carbon. So if they're pointed in the same direction, right? So so they're either both down, down, or up, up, right? Then they're cis. But if you have them one up, one down, right? One up, one down, then they're trans. But what happens if you don't have a hydrogen? You know, if if you don't have a hydrogen on one of the carbons, um, and and so so they had to come up with a more generic naming scheme, and that's where this E and Z comes into play. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the two carbons of the double bond independently, okay? And then we're going to so we're going to have a high and a low, right? So it'll be like a one and a two on one on the left, and one and two on the right. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to set the rules, same rules that we did for the for the R and the S as far as priority goes, and really it, you know with weight, okay? And we're going to use the same process. Now you're going to do it on the on on the, the one carbon, you know, the carbon on the left, and then you're going to do the same thing on the carbon on the right, and then when you compare the two, where are the highs? If, if the high, if both high priorities are on the same side, so they're both up or they're both down, then we're going to say that that's the Z, okay? And it's um, it's German for zusammen, I think I believe, which means together. Um, and so, and and I'm sure my German grandmother's rolling in her grades when I say that, um, but. But the way that you remember is, that are they on the same side? In a really bad German accent, right? So that's, are they on the same side? Yes, then they are Z. If they are on the opposite side, so 
you know, one's up and one's down, um, then, they're, then they're in the E configuration, which is, I believe it's in Gagan, um, which means opposite, which I always thought was really a quirk because this one looks like, you know, they're, they're both of these little stems are pointed to the same side, and this one is, is always pointed to the opposite way. Um, so that, so you would think that this one would be like a, like a, these would be together, these would be separate, and these would be together, but it's just a little quirk of the German language. Um, so but that, but if you think about, if you remember, are they on the same side? You will um, be able to get this correct. Okay. So what we do is we slice this in half so we compare, you know, left carbon and, and low, you know, get a higher priority, lower priority, and we go over here, right, higher and lower. Right, and we, and we take this away, right? So in this case, they are they are not on the same side. So they are, um, so this is E. Here, they are on the same side. And so it is Z, okay? And so if you look at this, right? So again, we're gonna, we're gonna slice this, right? We're gonna look at that carbon and that. So we're gonna have the red carbon and the, and the, um, and the blue carbon, okay? So on here in the blue carbon, right? What do we do, right? So we have hydrogen. We have, uh, and then this side is a CH2, so it's a carbon. So carbon is heavier than hydrogen. So this is this is going to be the high side, and this is going to be the low. This is going to be a higher priority than that. Okay, so on here on the red side, right, what we're going to do, right, we have chlorine versus carbon, right? So chlorine is heavier than carbon, right? So this is going to be the high, and this is going to be the low. Okay, so we take it away, right? So here's the high on this side. Here's the high on this side. Are they on the same side? No, then it's E. Okay, on here, again, we have this carbon and this carbon. Okay. And again, if you had a tie with one of these, right, what would you do? you then go out one, one further. Okay, and then check it. Just like with the R and the S, you just keep going out until you find a difference. Okay, but you have to radiate out until you find a difference and stop. Okay. Now for here, right, again, oop, oop. We'll, we'll keep the colors the same, All right? So, so we have the blue side, right? So this is a CH3, right? This is a CH2, right? So they're both carbons, right? But this one has, right, this one has one carbon, carbon bond, three CH. This one has, right, two CH, or two carbon carbon, two CH, right? So they're both carbon carbon. Right? But this one has two, this one has one. So that means this one is going to be the high and this one's going to be the low. Okay? So on the red side here, right, you've got a, again you've got a CH2 and a CH2. So this one has um, two carbon carbon bonds, two CH. This one has one carbon carbon, right? One CO bond, right, right there, and then two CH. Okay, so for here the heaviest bond is carbon oxygen. Here it's carbon carbon. Okay, so COs are heavier than carbon carbon, so therefore this one is going to get the higher priority, and so here it's the high. So high, high, they are on the same side, so it is Z, Z configuration. Okay. There you go. Good luck.